they cried out, Amen, praise the Lord. And from the throne came a voice that said, Praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him, from the least to the greatest. Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd, or the roar of mighty ocean waves, or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and let us give honor to him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. For the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are, or who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him. And they will see his face, and his name will be, will be written on their foreheads. And there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Look, I am coming soon bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright morning star. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let anyone who hears this say, Come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. He who is the faithful witness to all these things say, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. on all week long, and then I sit down to write it on Saturday. And yesterday, in fact, I'd gone walking in the morning with Margaret DeRuce, and, and as I was uh, walking back from the church, I mean, it was all going through my head, and then I got home to sit down to do it, and it was, there was nothing. Oops. And then when I woke up this morning, I actually did take a little nap last night, it was, it all came flooding and at me, and so I hope uh, that I can speak with some clarity today, and, and what came flooding at me, realistically, was just scripture after scripture after scripture. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, back in the day, uh, sermons, or the proclamation of the word, was just scripture, uh, because God's word, God can say it best, and so um, I do indeed pray uh, that, we, that we all might uh, hear what God has to, in fact, let's pray. Lord God Almighty, you are good, and, and your word endures forever. In fact, um, your word does not return void. And so I pray this day that, that we would hear your word, uh, that we would hear your word spoken, and that it would indeed be woven together in such a way that we would understand uh, your story and your love for us and your call for us. And, uh, and with that, God... I pray, Holy Spirit, knowing that you are here, that you would move in power, that you would be speaking in us and to us, that you would speak in me, to me, through me, and in spite of me, uh, that my words would be yours and would be clear and concise and understood. You are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Whatever happens, happens. It will be what it will be. You have to take the good with the bad. Everything
everything happens for a reason. So, so um, in this uncertain world, these sayings appear to be good advice. You hear them often, and they point to the fact that there are things beyond our control, no matter how hard we try to control them, no matter what ways we try to control them. Whatever happens, happens. It'll be what it'll be. You have to take the good with the bad. Everything happens for a reason. These sayings are often offered to persons when there are decisions to be made on their behalf. They are offered when hardships come, when people lose their jobs or find relationships crumbling. These sayings are shared with people when they face tragedy, fire and flood, diagnoses and prognosis which are troubling, the death of a loved one. It seems when people don't know what to say, they fall back on these idioms. Whatever happens, happens. It'll be what it'll be. You have to take the good with the bad. Everything happens for a reason. In this certain, uncertain, broken world, these words appear as if they're good advice. They are offered as comfort. These sayings tend to be our answers to the hard questions for the things we just can't understand. But truthfully, these words, whatever happens, happens. It will be what it'll be. You have to take the good with the bad. Everything happens for a reason. They're short-sighted. And in my humble opinion, they can do more harm than good. I've said them before, and I've heard people say them before, but, but here nor there. In fact, as I think about these sayings more and more, these words, they're, they're contrary to the story of God, to our story. Whatever happens, happens. It'll be what it'll be. You have to take the good with the bad. Everything happens for a reason. These sayings, these explanations for life's hardships, and, you know, actually, in theory, when good things happen, nobody tells you, you got to take the good with the bad. Or, or when good things happen, people aren't saying, you know, it'll be what it'll be. But, but here nor there. These sayings, these explanations, they don't fall in line with the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. They don't allow for the promise of eternal, abundant life. The victory that we have over sin and death in the here and now and forever. Whatever happens, happens. It'll be what it'll be. you got to take the good with the bad. Everything happens for a reason. These words, they are spoken in an attempt to bring peace. However, I think that they bring anxiety. I think that they bring hopelessness and even a misunderstanding of who God is and God's steadfast love for us and for all of creation. We hear these words and we find ourselves trying to accept the bad. We find ourselves giving in to the difficult. We find ourselves settling in whatever situation that we find ourselves we find ourselves searching for that reason, as if God creates these struggles because we have some lesson to learn. It was uh, in the last Bible study in the spring that it really kind of like came in my brain going, you know, those of you who are parents, have you ever broken your kid's leg because they needed to learn not to climb up trees? Right? So do you think that God would go, you need a lesson to learn, let me, fall, let, me let you fall out of that tree? and break your leg. Or you've got a lesson to learn that, that you ought not be drinking and driving, so how about you crash your car into a tree? Or how about you crash your car into someone else and take their... I mean, like, seriously. Would you, would you do that to your child? So why would you think that God would do that to us? But, but a side note there, you know, everything happens for a reason. No, Scripture tells us that God will work things for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. You, you see where these, these sayings, these idioms, they, they, they do run contrary to who God is. If only, if only we could find ourselves immersed in God's word, which is God's love letter to us. Well, it, and it calls us, and it shows us the more, the better, the best that God created us to be, and in that and that God has, is moving us towards with the new creation, which is why God stepped out of heaven to come to earth as a human, to show us that we don't have to live a life that does settle, for it'll be what it'll be, whatever happens, happens, that, that we don't have to settle for a life where, where we accept the bad instead of looking, and not just looking for the good, living the good, even in the midst of the bad. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. No, 
not whatever happens, happens. It'll be what it'll be, except the good with the bad. Come to me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Get rid of those other burdens. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle of heart. And find rest for your souls. Don't spin your, don't have your mind spinning going, what am I supposed to learn? <laughs> Jesus says, my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. If you love me and obey my commandments, I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth, and the world did not receive him because it wasn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. The whole world's too busy going, well, whatever will be, will be. Whatever happens, happens. Got to take the good with that. No, the world's not looking for the idea that God will be with us through the power of the Holy Spirit in us and through us, offering us that eternally abundant life here now. A life where we, it says, you know, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, where we lean into all that God wants for us and is willing to offer us. Jesus continues, no, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you, and I'm leaving you with the gift, peace of mind and heart. The peace I give you, the world cannot give you. <laughs> Whatever happens, happens. How peaceful is that? Take the good with the bad. Does that bring you peace? Everything happens for a reason as you struggle to figure out, well, what is that reason, God? Does that bring you peace? And he continues, <laughs> don't be troubled or afraid. Don't be sitting there waiting for whatever happens to happen. And that it was that last part of the last verse of Be Thou My Vision, which brought us to this sermon series. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall. I'm singing this hymn as, as we were being sent forth from, from chapel at Asbury uh, when I was there in uh, September. And it was these words, heart of my own heart, whatever befall. And it was in that I exhaled. And my shoulder, I walk around like this all the time, but my, the tension in my shoulders just released. Heart of my own heart. Now later I went and I sat down with the whole hymn, and, and I did look at that, that next part. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall. You know, that does sound like those sayings, heart of my, whatever befall, whatever happens, happens, it'll be what it'll be. But, but no, look at what follows. Whatever befalls, heart of my own heart, whatever befalls, still be my vision and ruler of all. <laughs> Whatever befalls, I'm going to look to you. I'm not going to accept it, but I'm going to look to you to continue to guide me through it. I'm going to look to you and celebrate those, those ways in which you have revealed yourself and your love. And be my ruler of all. Don't let me lean into the things of this world in, in hopes to control, in hopes to find satisfaction, in hopes to find love. No, show me and be my Lord of all. Heart of my own heart, whatever befalls, still be my vision and ruler of all. But wait, you got to look at the beginning of the verse as well. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joy, O bright heaven's sun. Our life in Christ, our life proclaiming God's number one, our, our life as being loved by God and loving God, heart, soul, mind, strength. It's not about just living in this muck and mire of the world, trudging along. Waking up each day and considering it to be better than the alternative. I actually tell people, not really, but nonetheless, <laughs> living that, that life where you're just going along. Whatever happens, happens. Our life in Christ, our trusting in his work on the cross, in his victory over sin and death, that calls us to a life where we proclaim with the prophet Jeremiah. We speak to, to, to what's hard. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I'll never forget that awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. May I reach heaven's joy, O bright heaven's sun. The Lord is good, Jeremiah continues, the Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search him, still be my vision. So it is good to wait quietly for the salvation from the Lord, not salvation from what this world offers, from, from addiction or power or, or stuff. 
or relationships with people or governments. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is God's faithfulness, whatever befall. Not just about things happening, or it'll be what it'll be, but God's faithfulness in this world. We hear the author of Hebrews reveal to us, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, our vision. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he is seated in a place of honor beside God's throne. It's not about accepting whatever happens. It's not about accepting the, the, the bad. It's about accepting the good that God wants us to have. Yes, this is a broken, fallen world. It is a world that, as God did not intend it to be, but it is a world that God is recreating. It is a world where Jesus ushered in the new creation. It is a world where we are called to live in victory. Not, not settling for whatever happens, happens. Not, not settling for the defeat of, of, of the bad, for, for the defeat of, of, of this idea of, well, <laughs> I, I've got to take on whatever happens because surely there's something I'm supposed to learn from it. No. <laughs> what we're supposed to do is live in victory. You know, I, again, I'm, I'm one who, you know, I was an athlete, and, and you know what? It's much better to walk off the field uh, having won. Actually, it's much better to walk onto the field with this expectation of winning, with this expectation of victory. Imagine if you walked out of this door expecting victory over sin. What would happen if you walked out of this door expecting victory in the cheers of that great cloud of witnesses? What would happen if you walked out of these doors living into the victory uh, that, that Christ is the champion of, who initiates that and who has given us the victory? Whatever happens, happens. It'll be what it'll be. You've got to take the good with the bad. It happens for a reason. You don't have to take the loss, people. You don't have to let the game play out and, and just, well, you know, if we lose, no. <laughs> No. Live into that victory. Romans tells us you're more than a conqueror. You're more than just the winner of the, of the game of life. You have conquered sin and death through Jesus Christ. You, you put on those robes of righteousness. You sit down at the wedding feast that, that Sheila read about in the book of Revelations. These sayings, whatever happens, happens. You know, I don't have to repeat them again. They're short-sighted, and they describe a life which hopes for the best but expects the worst or settles for what is. Yes, again, these li this life is full of hardships and tragedy, struggles, doubts, and fears. It's full of uncertainty, pain, and suffering. And you all have your stories of that. I have my stories of that. And Jesus said as much. He did say, this, in this world, you will suffer. He, he did say that there would be struggles. But he told us we would overcome them. He told us that, that, that he overcame them, and because of that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can as well. So why do we show up thinking all is lost? Why don't we show up in life with, with the proclamation of victory, not just for ourselves, but for this world? Think about it. Peter, you know, the disciple, uh, he knew his fair share of pain and suffering and even humiliation. And he writes to the church how he handles the whatever befalls. He shares what it means to call on Jesus to be our vision and ruler, even when, even when the enemy is prowling around, even when the enemy is telling you, guess what? <laughs> You're going to fail. <laughs> guess what? You're not good enough. Gu guess what? There's no way that God can love you because of what you've done. Peter tells us, humble yourself under the mighty power of God. 
under the one who can indeed win. You let go of your control because God is the one who is powerful. Humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares and care, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. Be strong in your faith. Remember that you are part of the family of believers all over the world, and they're going through the same thing as you. You're on the same team. You've got the same coach who has defeated the enemy. Live like it. Don't, don't settle. Don't settle for, for, for accepting the bad. Don't, don't settle for that, y'all say it's human nature. Don't settle for that sin nature in you. I'm preaching myself too. I hope y'all know that, right, when I stand up here. Right? In God's kindness, Peter continues, in his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by the means of Christ Jesus. So after you've suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he'll place you on a firm foundation, all power to God forever. It's hard to understand. The prophet Isaiah, he says God's ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. But he says that God has made a, a way in the wilderness. He's the one who says the Messiah is coming, the wonderful counselor, the prince of peace, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the one who will be victorious. We can get through it. Paul tells us, you know, in Philippians 4 about giving thanks in all things and, and, and with prayer and supplication, you know, that, that we indeed will know the peace of Christ which surpasses all understanding. He, he tells us that, that he's learned to be content in all circumstances, the good and the bad, because Christ can do all things, or he, sorry, Paul, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You figure out how to live through the good and the bad because you've got the strength of Christ. You've got the victory. Jesus continues to tell us that he'll never leave us or forsake us. We hear all through the Old Testament to, now there's a psalm where the, where the refrain, there's two psalms, where it's God's steadfast love endures forever. And if you just Google that too, it continues through there. And God continues to tell the people of Israel, even though they have been living horribly and not being obedient and choosing, choosing control with idols, wood and, and wood and metal and stone instead of the God of the universe, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He, he, and he gave the people the vision Literally, as he led the, the, the Israelites out of slavery, the pillar of, of cloud by day and fire by night, and, and I was reading that passage again, and, and it says when they went through the Red Sea, God was before him, God was before them in that pillar, and behind them, the, the Lord, uh, the, the um, angel of, of, oh my goodness, I'm good, I can't, oh, I can't get it. God was God's protection. The heavens' armies were behind them. Being that vision and, and wanting to be our ruler, our Lord, because, because when, when we are obedient, there's blessings. When we're obedient, there's victory. Not only is God did God offer the people of Israel that physical vision? But as they were preparing to go into the, into the promised land, the Lord tells Joshua over and over and over again, it's Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9, be strong and courageous, do not be discouraged, I will be with you. Meditate on my word, don't go to the left or the right. Be strong and courageous, I will be with you. That is the vision. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord is with you. Meditate on his word and follow, follow that path that he has made straight, the way, that, that Jesus is the way. That is our vision. It's not, you know, that, and, and I think I said this last week, but, but it's one of those, you know, that new thing, you do you, you just do what you want to do. No, God never said that. That's where you let whatever happens, happens. That where you, is where you have to accept the good with the bad. That's where you have to let anybody do whatever they want, whether it hurts anyway. It's not you do you, it's you do Jesus. Who 
taught us what it means to be fully human, who gave us victory. Now, I almost changed the hymn today to victory in Jesus, right? Uh, my Savior forever. We have that victory. And instead of whatever will be, will be, uh, whatever happens, happens. You have to take the good with the bad. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. What about these words? Jesus calling you, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Cast your cares upon me. Be strong and courageous. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Your, God's mercies are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness in, in spite of our unfaithfulness. Jesus said, peace I give to you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then those words from Revelation about that new heaven and the new earth. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen, which means so be it. I'm going to do what I've promised to do. I've won the war. You just have to run the race. You have to run the race knowing <laughs> that you'll be victorious. Not running hoping you might get there, but running through the mighty power of God, the Holy Spirit, who gives us victory over our sinful nature. Peace be with you. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. Great is God's faithfulness. His, his mercy is new every morning. Jesus saying, Lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. And the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, all who are thirsty can drink from the river of life. Today we will come to the table and celebrate Holy Communion, celebrate the victory uh, that Jesus uh, won for us over sin and death and through his broken body and shed blood. Uh, we come to the table to experience grace and to be strengthened, be strengthened to go into the world and run the race, to go into the world and, and, and live God's best, the abundant eternal life. But before we get there, it is, it is, it is the thing which we do is to confess our sins, uh, to say, you know what, God, we have been um, unfaithful. We have doubted, we have given into this world, but we know you to be the one who forgives, to be the one whose steadfast love endures forever to be the one who is making us new. And so, uh, in your bulletin, in spite of our best efforts to live faithfully, we fall short of what God intends for us. Because God has already promised to be merciful, we dare to tell the truth about our lives. In humility and trust, let us confess our sin. And you guys will repeat the part that's underlined, sorry. <laughs> God of grace, for our failure to love others as you have loved us, forgive us. For wasting the gifts you've given us and hoarding our goods, forgive us. For losing heart and abandoning hope, forgive us. For all the ways we turn from you, forgive us. Now offer your personal confessions. Continue. We offer our prayers in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace flows like a river, mercy like a never-ending stream. So believe in the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to prepare uh, your hearts for Holy Communion. Mighty awesome God, we come to this.
Jesus' table, giving you thanks and praise, because it is a great right, a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. But we come to this table longing to, to live into that victory, uh, the victory that you offered us through Jesus Christ. The Word made flesh, living among us and showing us what it means to be fully human, and then forgiving our sins, defeating sin on the cross, defeating death in the empty grave, and the promise to come in glory to bring the new creation, to, to judge the earth, to bring that new creation where all is made right and well, where, where the earth is healing and the leaves of the trees growing by the river of life, where all are thirsty and drink, where we are as victorious children, more than conquerors, your light, there is in which there is no darkness. We come and we remember that that victory came at a cost. We remember the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us first. He donned a towel. He humbled himself to wash the feet of his disciples, to show them what it means to love, to serve, to serve those who deny and betray, doubt and abandon, calling us to that same thing. And then he took bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, hey, eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you do this, do so in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples. And he said, hey, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do this as often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. And so with remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. We proclaim that mystery of faith in which Christ came to earth and humbled himself even to death on the cross. And he rose from the grave and he ascended into heaven and he's coming back. And with that mystery, we do pray, Holy Spirit, come upon us, gather here in worship. Come upon these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world. The body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, running that race to, to receive the prize that has already been won for us. The victory in Jesus. So Lord, we come awaiting that day where we will have feast at your banquet table. And we praise you for all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The world is broken. We are broken people. And Christ, who was whole, became broken that we might be made whole. And this indeed is the cup of suffering over which we give thanks. For we will suffer in this world. This world is not the end. So I invite you all to take and to eat and to feast. I invite you all to live a life that's victorious and to know the love of God for you and for you to love God, heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love, to share God's love everywhere to everyone. The disciples of Christ might be made, and this world will be transformed. And so may you go about your day and your week in the strength of God. May you go seeking, not seeking, living the victory. May you go to know God's love and in grace and in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.